uh, in Germany, he has translated uh, most of the hymns of Saint Ephraim into German and published around 30 books, all uh, Madroshi, the teaching or instructions of Saint Ephraim. So on one hand, uh, you have the Syrian text and on the other hand, the German translation. This has also been translated by um, uh, some of them by Sebastian Brock and others by uh, Father Sidney Griffith of the Catholic University of America and uh, Kathleen McQuay of Princeton University. So these are actually the people who could be invited also by the Jesus uh, youth people. So they will be able to impart a very good uh, vision of and also understanding of our own heritage. Anyway, so Saint Ephraim was the one who began this poetical method. And most of these hymns are also in our liturgy. Mara uh, Prem in the Bogusa, you may have heard of it, or Orthodox. Uh, the, the, uh, the, should, should we play that Sebastian Bach video in the picture and people get an orientation? Okay, you can yeah. do that. Yeah. Uh, please. Yeah, sure. What are their place among many, many prophecies that lived in Byzantine, Rome? What the place of these prophecies? Well, <clears throat> I like to see uh, Christian tradition as having not just Greek, East, Latin, West, which is how most people see it, but having three different elements. And the third would be what I call the Syriac Orient. And each of these traditions has its own particular quality um, or emphasis, which the others don't always have. And so each particular emphasis in each of these three traditions is of value to all the others. And that's why I think the Syriac tradition is particularly important, uh, and if you can put it in very simplistic terms, the Latin tradition is very good on the, the legal side, the hand law side, uh, the Greek tradition on the more philosophical side, and I would say the Syriac tradition is much more on the symbolic and uh, especially the poetic side. Of course you find in <coughs> Greek and Latin poetry wonderful things which are uh, equally fine, but I think the, as a word, the predominance of uh, poetry as a vehicle to theology is something that the Syriac tradition, especially with St. Ephraim, who besides being a first-class poet, is also a really important theologian. And it's that aspect that I think is absent from or forgotten in the other traditions, that theology uh, can be expressed in poetry just as validly as in prose. <laughs> Well, as Syriac Christology, there's no single tradition. And only one could say that uh, it's historically the case that the Syriac tradition has three different, uh, or it's the transmitter, three different Christological traditions. The Chalcedonian tradition, which of course is the same as the Byzantine tradition, and until the 17th century, Syriac was one of the languages of Patriarchate, Chalcedonian Patriarchate of Antioch, and that's often forgotten. Uh, so Syriac has a Chalcedonian tradition, 
Um, but then you have the East uh, tradition of the Church of the East and the tradition of the Syrian Orthodox and the other Oriental Orthodox churches. And <clears throat> simply because I had to read texts from all these three traditions, um, I have, I suppose, what you could say, the privilege of realizing that once you get underneath what they say on the surface and the verbal conflict, two nature, one nature, and so on, uh, they are all trying to express the same thing, but with different starting points that um, each tradition is afraid of one particular heretical position and so reacts in a certain way. Um, and also, in a particular, well, one could say, they belong to a particular theological understanding of certain terms, and uh, in particular the term hypostasis and uh, physis, uh, these are terms which are clearly understood in different ways. And once you realize this, you can see how the conflict um, has arisen and also how it should be resolved. And indeed has been resolved by theologians in, in modern uh, dialogue. Um, <clears throat> but unfortunately, that hasn't as well gone further because when you solve the theological problems, you find that they're key theological problems. <laughs> uh, but uh, as I see it, basically the Christological problems and uh, the differences uh, are soluble and indeed have been solved uh, in, in modern dialogue. There, in the book, students can get that's a difficult question, <laughs> and uh, at any one point it may be different. At the moment, um, and here's my chauvinism, I would say Oxford is a very good place. Uh, and not because I'm here, but because my successor, David Taylor, uh, is very good. And he was one of my best students. <laughs> and he has very wide knowledge, he's a very good scholar, uh, he's very open, and um, I think he will go far. In a way, um, the trouble is in Western academic world is in such a difficult position at the moment in the humanities. Uh, it was great uncertainty, and all the universities don't know what's going to happen to the humanities in this country. If you ask the vice chancellor, he says, We don't know. We should be, uh, the government should tell us what they're going to do. We don't know. And so everything is uncertain. Uh, so it's a matter of finding where there are good people, uh, sympathetic people, at a particular time. Uh, France is quite strong at the moment, Italy is quite strong at the moment in certain places, um, Holland, but different people have different aspects of interest. So it's a matter of exploring, to find where is the best. But uh, what I can say is that Oxford has the only taught master's course uh, in <coughs> Syriac studies. And uh, I started this off about 20 years ago and found it extremely useful for getting people really into the subject. We have very intensive reading uh, throughout the year. There's no thesis but um, um, four exam papers with essays. So um, you get a, at least I hope people should get a good basic knowledge of the tradition so that they can move on to do research in one particular uh, field that they, or author that they choose for. Because <laughs> there are very few places where you can study Syriac uh, as an undergraduate, and it's always as a subsidiary subject, so you're doing it with other things. Uh, so uh, this uh, course, uh, this MA course, Master's Studies in Syriac Studies, uh, it's unique outside India. India has, in Kerala, there's a good place. It's much cheaper than Oxford, <laughs> but the, um, the standard isn't, of course, quite the same. But that, that is another possibility. They have good classes, good people, good library. The St. Ephraim Ecumenical Research Institute in Kota in Kerala. 
So these are the only two places in the world at the moment uh, that have uh, a Syriac at a non, not at an elementary level. Um, I would put it in two ways. Uh, personally, the two great Syriac writers that I um, have learned so much from, uh, one is St. Ephraim, you might mention, the poet of the fourth century. Um, his theology is, I think, very meaningful, meaningful for modern uh, human, humanity. Uh, he's very ecological in his approach to uh, the relationship between humanity and the world, and that, that's obviously something very important. But he sees it not just on a physical basis of the physical world, it's also the, he sees the essential, uh, <clears throat> as an essential link between uh, humanity and the spiritual um, ecosphere, you could say. And then the, the other great Syriac writer whom I've learned a great deal from is St. Isaac the Syrian, St. Isaac of Nineveh. So he's a totally different writer from the monastic tradition. And of course, he got into Greece quite early on. So he has influenced uh, the Byzantine tradition uh, very profoundly. And of course, he's widely read today. Now, what seems to, um, as a way, separate Isaac out from uh, these many Greek uh, Byzantine monastic writers is that his writing um, in a tradition that's not, uh, well, this is too strong a word, not fettered by the Greek rhetorical tradition. Um, so he's writing much more, as it were, from a biblical style, uh, even though you will find that Isaac, uh, and if you compare him to the Septuagint, it's very different. But what I'm trying to say is that his approach and the way he puts things is much more pictorial in a way, um, and he works by images uh, rather than concepts. Um, and the images, as a way, are vehicles for concepts. And I think that's uh, uh, something that's very much present in in Ephraim too. But I would say this applies to both of them. Yes. That's a difficult question. <laughs> um, I think it's very important to let the church fathers speak to uh, the researchers and to us today, rather than imposing what we think they should say. Uh, that's the first most important thing. It's a responsibility that we have to them. They can't answer back and say that uh, you're wrong, <laughs> we are wrong. So uh, <clears throat> that, I think, is one of the most important things. Uh, I think, and such a lot is written about the Church Fathers today in the West, uh, I would say that it's perhaps more important to read the Church Fathers than to read the secondary literature, and be selective in what you read of the select, uh, secondary literature. And some of it's extremely good, some of it's very illuminating. <laughs> but uh, one can be bogged down, one can be drowned by so much of it. Uh, another thing I think would, and this is a great opportunity, there are a lot of important texts which are unpublished. Here's a wonderful chance to make them available. And also very important is to make these texts uh, available um, to ordinary people. It's not something just for scholars. And uh, what I think is one of the wonderful things that St. Vladimir's Seminary Press does, they have this popular patristic series. Uh, these are accessible translations with <clears throat> introductions that aren't too technical. They give the essential 
information and, as it were, act as a, a bridge from today to the ancient writers. And I think this is a very important role for all academics who work on logistics, um, because see, these are not, as well, kind of ancient documents just for us, they're for everyone. And uh, maybe in the form of anthologies or translations of single works, uh, it's a matter of choosing things that are going to speak to a much wider public, and there are plenty of things. So that, I think, would be what I suggest. Well, not at all. Thank you. Oh, very good. Oh, that's very good. He has mentioned also the St. Ephraim Ecumenical Research Institute uh, that was established in 1985. Uh, I was instrumental in getting it established. It is established in Kotayam, uh, and since 1985, its foundation, it serves uh, the needs of all the Syriac churches in India and abroad. Uh, since 1995, uh, we collaborate with the State University of Mahatma Gandhi University in Kotayam, and we offer a master's program in Syriac language and literature, as Sebastian Brock uh, uh, mentioned. It's a two-year program. Then we are recognized also as a research center leading to PhD in Syriac, because our library is the only one which has uh, about 85% of the published literature on Syriac <laughs> tradition. So that's actually an asset for the Syriac churches in India, and also outside. And we are, we are also renowned internationally because we offer Syriac programs, that means learning of Syriac language, getting initiation to Syriac music, uh, Syriac liturgy, within a period of two months. Because we give them individually and intensively. Uh, as I mentioned to you earlier, we had a Clinton from Ohio. He was there for six months, uh, two years back. Now we have a student from Ethiopia. Because Ethiopian tradition and Syriac tradition are connected. The Ethiopian tradition has, they even say when they speak about the history of their church, we were helped by nine Syriac mystic. So he told about Saint Isaac of Nineveh. So there were famous Syriac mystic people who went and helped the Ethiopian church. So if you go to any church in Ethiopia, you can see the iconographic representation of nine Syriac monks. And they are very close to our Malangara liturgical tradition. They also have ring. Uh, and uh, a good number of their prayers and anaphora, I mean the Kurbana texts, are or were translated from Syriac into Gaius. And also in the Greek tradition, you find a lot of prayers and hymns translated from Syriac into Greek or even into Coptic tradition. So we should not uh, forget our own wealth, our own heritage. Sebastian Brock was telling you, see the Latin West and the Greek East, but there is the third element, the Syriac East. And Father Panika will tell you, you may read that in, that in that small liturgical book. Actually, the Syriac tradition is the direct Semitic uh, tradition that inherited the tradition of the biblical tradition and Jesus tradition. So the other people went through Greek. So Syriac is actually the very same language of Jesus Christ. And we are the direct uh, inheritors or heirs of this tradition. So that's actually one of the aspects which we should not forget. So the way the Bible is meant to be understood is yeah. the way that it's interpreted in our tradition. Yeah, yeah. 
And uh, if you read the Peshitta Bible, you will be getting closer than all other interpretations to the mind of Christ. Uh, so that is one of the aspects which we should not forget. Then our, our tradition is very rich from the point of view, anaphora, Eucharistic tradition. See, we may have altogether 72 anaphora. So all of them are used, not used, but if you go through the manuscripts, you can find 72 anaphora. The Roman tradition had only one up to the Council of uh, Second Vatican Council. Only now, uh, at first they had four, now they have several anaphora for various occasions. Um, it's true, in the, there is a, uh, in the Roman tradition there is also an Ambrosian liturgy uh, from Milan. Saint Ambrose of Milan, who lived in the 4th century, visited Middle East and came to know uh, how the Syrians taught their faith to the people and it was through hymns. So the Latin West in, uh, uh, introduced their hymnological tradition through Saint Ambrose of Milan who came to know about this from the Syrians. So even there the Syrians had a role to play. Uh, and then the, the hymns, the amount of hymns which we have uh, is actually uh, quite rich for every Sunday. There are hymns which are not yet translated. Unfortunately, all our Syrian churches, uh, whether Orthodox or Catholics, sort of Malabar or Malandara, uh, we don't have now enough people to do this spade, spade work. That means make a translation that is available for the people. We have only every Sunday either the Namaskaram, Sriba Namaskaram, or the Kamda Namaskaram. That means of the Feast of the Cross and the Feast of Resurrection. But we have for every Sunday morning prayers, evening prayers, even uh, the noon prayers, and so on, which are not yet translated. And we are now translating that through our MS students. Uh, for each Sunday, there is a Sapro of its own. And these are the texts that brings out the theology and the teachings of our church. Because uh, they were written by Syriac fathers uh, who knew very well the biblical tradition. And in fact, through these hymns, they simply make the biblical message flow into us. For example, Ejaman and Verimanderim. See, this is actually the uh, the very same words of the gospel, but chiseled out in such a way that we can sing in eight different melodies. And it will strike to our heart. You know that part. Uh, there were only eight different melodies. So uh, now only the Orthodox, in the Orthodox seminary, there is only Father M. P. George and his students who are rather sure of this melody. I learned Syriac from this. See, Mula Manil Malpan, uh, he joined the Catholic Church in the, I think, 1932 from the Orthodox Church. And he knew very well all the melodies. So we were fortunate to have four months of teaching. Uh, when we joined the seminary, he taught us till October. And on October 14th, he died 50 years back. So we brought out a souvenir. And uh, we were actually we published this. So I learned Sarif from him. And Thiruvala Diocese was a little better compared to because we had this priest who knew very well the musical tradition. But now Thiruvala is also not that better. Anyway, we need musicians to uh, learn this Sriyak tradition before it gets lost. Uh, 
if Father M. P. George is dead and gone, we will not have anybody to learn this question. It will be lost. So it is absolutely important that we take care of the musical tradition of the church. The music makes a liturgy mystical. So that is one of so hymns and the musical tradition is one of the riches which we which we have and it should not be forgotten and it won't be lost. So I appeal the Jesus youth people to learn the language and then learn this music. This, this won't be very difficult. If you come for holidays, you can learn. So in fact, I brought some Syriac pages for the, giving you the Syriac alphabets. Within two months, you can learn Syriac. And you get also an initiation into the musical tradition. Uh, and it's sung by Father M. P. George. He gives also that class. So that's why uh, come to India whenever you can, and you will be enriched by that. We have at present one. Uh, uh, we have one one doctor from Malaysia. She is her you own. Know, an Orthodox uh, practicing lady doctor, and she plays very well the organs. And um, she wanted to play the music, so she came and stayed in Syria. And uh, Father M. P. George gave her the notation of all the different melodies, and she could play that even without knowing Syria. So, you know, you play the organ. Well, who plays here? Um, yeah. Jason. Yes? Jason, please. Oh. <laughs> so, if you come there uh, and spend some days there, you will get uh, any of uh, the book. Now, all the notations are published now in one of our publications, which is called Moran Eto. Just you can, you can uh, buy it. Yeah, you can buy it. It's a thick book. Um, so, the basic notation is there. You, uh, if you strike on your piano, you get already the tune. Uh, if you take a demand in very one there, then if you strike that, then you get all the eight different melodies. So uh, fortunately, he has done that. Uh, now the music will be stable. Otherwise, you know the melodies change when you will learn only vocally. So that is uh, one of the contributions of Father M. P. George. He should have done it earlier since. Uh, 15 years he was working on that. So nobody else can do that. I mean, so it's true, uh, Malangara Church is there, but nobody knows Syriac, and nobody took the pain to learn it, especially after the death of this one. We could, we learned something when we were in the minor seminary, but we also forgot. But all the same, uh, the Orthodox Church has helped us in that way. And this is very important because no other church has this kind of tradition. Uh, the Suro Malabar Church also abandoned its musical tradition. Now there is Father Patil, a priest belonging to the Changanashiri Archdiocese. He is doing his doctorate in Syria, that means in Mahatma Gandhi University, on the hymns of the Suro Malabar Church. We have two priests doing a uh, doctorate from Pale. And then Two Orthodox priests are also doing uh, doctorate. Then, from the Malangara side, we have uh, Father uh, Kodinat Munel, who was here recently, uh, I think, in Detroit for nearly one and a half years. So, he did uh, his thesis on Isaac of Nineveh, about whom uh, Sebastian Brock was telling. So he, uh, Isaac of Nineveh, uh, he lived in Nineveh, so in today's Iraq, and he is the first uh, ascetical or mystic, mystical writer who was a model for East Syriac mystics and also the saints. And it was very close to uh, Islamic mysticism. Actually, the Muslim mystic learned a lot from Isaac of Nineveh. So we were also a model 
for the Muslim thinkers and Muslim theologians. But they don't acknowledge that, but most of their thinking actually come from the Syria Christian background. The Islam was born in a East Syriac background. There is no doubt about it. Uh, the words and also some of the difficult cases in Quran can be expressed, can be explained only when you know the grammar in Arabic and in Syriac. The zero Aramaic roots of Quran. Uh, this is a book published by one. Uh, Chris, uh, Chris, uh, Christoph Luxembourg. Christoph Luxembourg is a person. Uh, so he explains about thousand cases in Iran, in, in Quran, which can be explained only with the help of Syriac grammar. Naturally, he had to publish that under false name because the Muslims do not uh, like to hear about. Uh, about editions or explanations of Quran, they think everything came directly from Allah and uh, nothing is explainable, corrigible, uh, correctable, and so on. Anyway, uh, Syriac studies can help even to understand better Islamic thoughts. Then, uh, some of our prayers, Premium Sadro. My thesis was on Premium Sadro. Uh, actually, Premium Sadro are most important prose prayers. There are hymns and then the prose prayers. The variety of our tradition consists in that. Once you have, for example, a prose prayer of introduction. Then comes the uh, 50, uh, 50 Psalm. Uh, then comes a Kolo, or Enyono they call it. Then again, Premion Sadro. And after Sadro, then again a Kolo. Then comes an Etro. Uh, then comes the Kukulion and so on. So there is a definite order in our liturgy. And this order is there since 6th century. So you find uh, Premion Sadro going back to 6th century and 6th and 7th century, the earliest ones. In the beginning there were only 7 because the number of the feasts that were celebrated within a year were not, was not that many. As the uh, number of feasts increased, the premium sadro also increased. Now there are about uh, 120 sadri for the feast days. Then there are sadro and uh, premium sadro uh, for uh, commemorations, uh, for feast days of the saints and of the Mother of God, and for the departed and for the uh, Lent, so the uh, big Lent especially. This is all translated already? This is all uh, translated. The prose prayers are translated into Malaya. But unfortunately, uh, Malagra church has only very little, but we can simply use the Orthodox tradition. There is no problem because they are, everything what we have, we receive from the Orthodox especially the Malangra church. So there is nothing, even our priesthood, our liturgical books, Mari Vainos, Mateofinos, and all the first members, they all came from the Orthodox church. So there is nothing wrong in taking their prayer. Uh, only the, we have started translated a little differently, but all the same, uh, they are happy if we take their tradition. Yeah, but they, in that case, now and then we can recite the prayers together. So there is nothing wrong in using the Orthodox books, but you can learn much more from the Orthodox books. I will give you one example. If you take 
the orthodox ritual of marriage, especially the, those books which were printed in uh, by Konat Milpan in Pambakura. You can find in the beginning and also at the top in the, to, uh, in the uh, at the top of the pages running title, uh, which runs like this: Takso the Subogo. Takso means order, ritual. So it's a Greek word. Taxis means order. The, the suogo, suogo, the Z. Z U W O G O. Suogo means uniting, joining together. So that was a ritual, that is a ritual of joining together. That is a marriage ritual. And this word comes from the, from the gospel, which is read during the marriage celebration. That is from Matthew 19, I think, 19. So in, on, in verse 9, what the Lord joined together, let no man put asunder. So joined together, zave, that is the Syriac word. And the uh, noun form was coined to give the name for this literature. So takso visuvo. Most of our people do not know. Even the priests, if you ask our priests, they may not know. Even formerly, the Surah Malabar Church had this name. Some of the older priests told me, ah, our ritual was formerly called Taksad Suvaga. So, Avid Suvaga Anvari, Namur Suvogondi. So, there was a common name formerly. But in the modern liturgical books, they just ignored because they did not know the meaning of it. But in the Orthodox liturgical book, you can find you can find this name. This name is important. Why? Savik and Subogo means in Greek also also in Syria. Yoke. You know, you people are married. On the day of your marriage, you got also a yoke. You know, nukam. You know what is yoke means? you get. Two animals are there, or two horses, or two buffaloes, or two, and you know the formerly the our monitor and may may have seen that. So the parents may have seen. Oh, will the partners match? Are they of the same height, of the same educational background, and so on? So that means a balancing is necessary. So on the day of marriage. You are united, but under a yoke. So this yoke was given by Christ. So with Christ, it is easy to bear that yoke. And there is an implied message. Yoke means you have to balance the burden of your married life. If you balance it, it is enough that the partner simply walk. On the other hand, if you do not balance the weight, then one partner may be suffering and the other partner may be enjoying. So in a married life, uh, you get actually a message already from this name, that you have to uh, have a balanced way of lifestyle. Then your uh, yoked and wedded life will be happy because Christ has given. Receive the ring, receive the crown, as if from the hands of the Lord. See, all the lat uh, very uh, on the 15th or 14th of uh, June, I participated in the, in the Latin marriage in uh, in Narragansett in uh, Rhode Island. So, at the young priest, he was very very influential in that parish. He told, "Okay, I give the ring." It is not. It is for the partners to uh, give the ring and exchange the ring. But in the Malangara tradition, it is different. The ministers are not. So he has played uh, that parish priest. Uh, he said the ministers of this sacrament are the partners mutually. But in the Oriental. Uh, Tradition, it is not so. The minister is always the priest or the bishop, whoever it be. 
So it is they who give the ring or the crown as if from the hands of the Lord. Clilo be they more So the crown through the hands of the Lord, which the kohano, the priest, uh, places on the bride, on the bride. So this shows already the mediation. So very often uh, our people have the tendency to imitate uh, the Latin theology. It is good, but from that context, but we should also be aware of our own tradition, our own explanation, because it is very interesting. And the Universal Church is looking for such contribution from the Sura Malabar Church or Malangara Church. Oh, we, uh, very often all our canon law specialists who studied in Rome, they would say, oh, marriage is a, uh, is a contract. It's okay, it's one way of explaining it. It is a legal explanation. On the other hand, marriage is a united life which Christ has uh, introduced and so on. So it is a little different. There is another shade of me. And the Universal Church is waiting for such contribution. And that's why the youth here and also the ministers have the obligation to delve deep into their own heritage. Unfortunately, in our seminaries, the Surah Malabar Church has, I think, four major seminaries in, in, in Kerala. And we have one. Millions of rupees are spent in these seminaries. And if you ask all the young priests who come out of these process, there would, there would be only hardly 10 who would know the Sri of tradition, who are able to explain their own heritage uh, based on their source level. So this situation has to be changed. When Cardinal Tisran, uh, I think in the 60s, visited India, he is the one who took the initiative that the Orientals should have their own seminary so that they can learn more their own tradition. Unfortunately, after Vatican, uh, people understood the whole message of Vatican is to go to the local language and the mother tongue of the people. It was very good, but it was not only that. Go back to the sources. That was the main appeal of Vatican II. Unfortunately, in India, most the Catholic Church were more in the direction of inculturation, that means learning Hindu texts and Hindu music, Hindu ways of worship, that's all good. But that we could learn from a Hindu rather than from a Catholic priest who knows a little bit of uh, Sanskrit and who used to explain this is Hinduism, this is Hindu. And as a, on, as a result, there was a very fast uh, inculturation, they sacrificed a lot of valuable postures and also texts of Christian worship. You know, squatting on the ground like a Hindu pujari and uh, celebrate the Christian Eucharist. It is an anachronism because this position is sacrificing the posture of standing, uh, which is essential for a communication between the celebrant and the congregation. The Hindus do not need that. Uh, they don't have any dialogue with the celebrant and the people. He simply uh, sprinkles a little water there, that's all. So in the name of a fast and uh, superficial inculturation, they simply sacrifice our posture, especially in Kulishimala and also some of the Jesuits and also in the National Biblical and Catechetical Center in Bangalore. These were all uh, institutions, post-Vatican institutions that simply Latinized our Syro-Malabar Church and the Malangara Church.
and all the clients who were going there, they were mostly Suro Malabati. And most of the sisters who went there, they say, oh, we don't need any more Suryak. We don't need any more Suryak singing and so on. So they were all, we are Catholics. So they started singing all the Hindu melodies. That no, no problem, but they are okay. But they should begin with what they have. So there we went in, in the wrong way. And fortunately it is now coming back. And uh, also, I mentioned a little bit on Sunday, the charismatic movement. So now, charismatic movement is good, but that makes the Oriental churches forget their own obligation to go down deep into their own country. They simply sing the modern hymns, they are good, but also the hymns which we have in our tradition. They are also inspired by the Holy Spirit and they kept our people uh, together up to this time. And we have an obligation to know them and these are also inspired by the Holy Spirit so we should not forget them. So the end result of this, uh, this uh, charismatic movement is that our priests and our sisters go only to that type of spirituality. If you make that much sound with Sharanam Ayyappa, you get also the same feeling. So it's not necessary uh, that it comes from the Holy Spirit. Okay, you, you preach Bible convention, there is no problem, but don't exaggerate the number of healings. So these are all uh, tele control. They wanted to att they want to attract people. This is actually evidently against the spirit of Christ. He didn't to miracle was not his way of propaganda. That's not the way to attract people. He was raised on the cross on Golgotha, and that is actually the result. and this kind of movement and also this. Uh, Prosperity gospel uh, tend to make the people forget the meaning of cross. So it is the cross that has attracted the people to Christ. So uh, we need to go deep into our own heritage and then bring out the best from this tradition. Sebastian Brock has mentioned about um, St. Vladimir's Seminary. Uh, he has published uh, <coughs> two numbers uh, of their publication. All of them are, are translations of Syriac hymns into English. One of them is entitled Treasure House of Mysteries. And these are nothing but translations of our most important hymns from the Syriac tradition into English. It's not very costly if you write to them so you can some, use some yeah, of them. Seminary, New York? Uh, St. Vladimir Seminary. Okay. I bought, uh, I bought uh, two examples, uh, copies, but unfortunately it is there. I cannot show you. It is in New York. But you can write to them. St. Vladimir Seminary, New York. So you can, have is that where the Orthodox Church is? Yeah, it's in Georgia Church's neighborhood. Yeah. Oh, okay. Ask them to send it. It is very good. You can use for meditation and so on. And I think as Jesus knew, especially belong to Surah Malabar and Malendra Church, please use also our hymns. Our hymns can inspire you. Uh, as I uh, told you about Jesus' prayer, and there is also the church, uh, what is available in the church. Uh, I, I think you mentioned Vindulag in Naranjan then. Here you get any, a, 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 a definition of the church. Vindulagin, <laughs> 
In this, you have a definition of the church. The, the one who made the heaven and the earth built the church as his residence, as his pulatin, as his palace. All those who want uh, that they speak uh, to speak with God, let them enter into the church because he resides in it and he makes the church grow. So this is actually the first stanza. And the second stanza uh, is, um, you, can, you can read the English translation. So Clement, you ought to do something. So the second translation, the uh, second stanza, it says all the provisions which God had made in the church. Vishihadan manavati aidum shuddha sabha bhagyangal purnamada parudisa sadushamaho mamodi sayumadil sahaden marastingalum pujapi tavumunda. Hindi ji vaushadiye amhale yeluya yehale yeluya padam chide gido kahane ma kalubunda the translation to the paradise which is filled with blessings resembles the holy church the betrothed of Christ in it there is baptism and in it there to the paradise which is filled with blessings resembles the Holy Church, the betrothed of Christ. In it there is baptism, and in it there are the bones of the martyrs, the holy altar and the priests, who wave over the mysteries and carry the holy things and distribute the medicine of life. Okay, so you see short passages uh, which are uh, quite interesting for your meditation and also for your uh, on your religion classes. Uh, liturgy is the first school of theology. So that we should not forget. We should, we should start and we should crown our uh, pilgrimage and our theological and spiritual pilgrimage with what we have, with the prayer. And we should end up with the prayers. Because this is actually the oriental vision. And you have to take seriously our prayers and our hymns. Then I mention only one more example, and with that I finish. Um, take, for example, the incense offering. So, what is the meaning of incense? <laughs> So the age of Dukhavaliya to who are a little poverty What is it? What is the name? See, in the, go back to the Old Testament. You have two series of offerings. Blood offerings and then incense offerings. Read the book of Leviticus and the instructions regarding the golden altar, the main altar. It has to be covered with gold. And, uh, and the priest was not supposed to enter there any time. Only once at a year. Or certain definite hours. Only mornings and evenings. So there were more instructions regarding the incense offerings than the blood offerings which were done outside the sanctuary. So the main important offering that was acceptable to God, which God accepted as sweet smell, perfume, that was actually incense of So what did the Syriac fathers do? They went through all these uh, liturgical texts 
of Book of Leviticus, and they interpreted everything in reference to Christ. So, the murder of Christ is interpreted as the uh, the killing of the Lamb of God, Saint Paul, and he also said we should be spreading the good smell of Christ. So there was already an interpretation in Saint Paul of Christ and his sacrifice in reference to the innocence of the So the civic traditions took hold of it and they proposed a sort of incense Christology. The Eucharist turns around the, all, the bread and the wine and all the other prayers that it be any sacrament like marriage or even Paragodasha or the morning and evening bread. All these prayers turns around the axle of incense offering. And we have a series of prayers which are named after incense. It's not like the Latin tradition which simply recite, have the, uh, uh, the terrible offering in the beginning without any word. On the other hand, the Malangara or, or Syrian Orthodox prayers speak about the meaning of this incense. And Christ is the incense par excellence. You are the incense par excellence that is offered to the Father and reconciled the world with the Father. You are the incense which gave sweet smell to the smelling objects and you instructed us to offer incense as a sign of our prayer to God and so So the whole uh, death of Christ is interpreted in reference to Christ. If you want to know it, take the etro, the etro, prayer of incense. This is a short prayer. It is there that you find the incense crystal. You find Christ as uh, or under the terminology of all smelling substances. He is called muron. Muron is good smell and so on. So you see, in our own tradition, we have a lot of treasures which we have to learn from our books and from our prayers. And that is the uh, that is the appeal which I want to share with you. Uh, and I congratulate the Jesus youth people here who give an attention to the tradition of the church. And it is much more interesting than the Jesus youth people in Kerala. They are more under the command of the uh, charismatic people. I'm not against them, but uh, we should give more attention also to our own tradition. And uh, I'll show you also some images to show you how important our older churches are from the point of the spirit. So here you have uh, where is it? Um, is it there? Oh, okay, yeah, oh, okay. Oh, you can yeah. so uh, turn it uh, yeah. so that epigraphical vestigial sensory uh, Sriya India. See, India uh, is Sriya from the first century onwards. Don't forget about that. It's very often people say, oh, Christianity in India came with the British. It's uh, actually very uh, unhistorical uh, way of explaining history. Uh, before Rome became Christian, we were Christians through the Apostle St. Thomas. So that's why the, our ambassador, Renjan Mathai, when he, uh, he was ambassador of India in France, his, um, his, his uh, grandfather was a, uh, was a Mahkama priest <laughs> teaching Suryat in the Mahkama church. And when he came to know that there is one St. Ephraim, a community researching, he asked me to visit him. 
and he uh, released our first book on the Syrian inscriptions in Kerala, in Sorbonne University in uh, Paris. So that was his formulation. India is to be remembered not only for Sanskrit and Hinduism, but also for Syriac and Christianity. So that is his own way. So I use that uh, for Syriac India. Okay. So here you see the Indian map to show Kerala. This was actually the presentation that I made in Toronto. To show that. Okay, next. So here you see Kerala and all the states. Next one. So these are actually centers of Syriac churches all around Cochin, Matanjeri, Dianpur, uh, Kodamangalam. The south of Kerala, south of Kota, and there are not many. Uh, the, the Christian centers were there, you know, Cochin and Karnavalam uh, district. Uh, so we, we found a lot of churches with Syriac institutions in those areas. And these uh, centers are mentioned there. Next one. So here you find the Centum, not the Centum's cross, this is called the Persian cross. Valiatali Persian cross. That's See, not the same thing that the Sura Malabar Yeah, that can be. It's actually it's it's from, from this, from yeah. this earlier. So this is actually the Arabic inscription. It comes from Iran. So we had actually, it's already shown here, and this, this stone goes back to 10th century. And this is St. Thomas. This is actually the, uh, the side altar in the Valiant Cross. If we come to Kota and you can see. Uh, let me go to the toilet sure. and come. You can see. What cross do you guys have? What cross do you guys have? So, yeah. I follow it. Actually, it was funny because um, on Facebook there was this like some uh, Syrian church or Persian church or something like that. Those they were actually selling these little shirts, which had this cross on the front, and it said like you know uh, keep on following God. But you saw the cross, and they were like, "Hey, that's our cross." Yeah, so oh, my mother was looking at it. They have they made that T-shirt. Oh, they made that T-shirt. Yeah. Okay. What? It's like St. Thomas. It's considered St. Thomas cross. We all do Mall It's part of, part of our history. Yeah, all of our history. Yeah, it's all of our history. I was looking at that at our church. We did with that, that gold one that was sitting there at the choir site. Yeah, on that big bird up there. Yeah, I think oh, it's that. Yeah, is that It's the same. It's the same. They do have the normal one. This is a East Syria okay. tradition. So, so it's not so Persian cross. So if you that is the okay. next one, next one that uh, that shows already the connection with the East Syria tradition of Iraq and Iraq. so here in Valiabali Persian cross Syria inscription here is Syria. <coughs> then Low Nehemi Destabahar. Hello, and Baski Faith, Moran, Hazen Sheep. In Hadar, I take glory that this be in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. Quotation of St. Paul. So, this is uh, not as old as the Persian cross. Uh, this is actually an imitation of the St. Thomas cross from Mylapur. Now, Mylapur is the tomb of Christ. So, so 
this is what's the, this is what, what's the writing on the top? On the top, it is not sure. People haven't yet. There is one British scholar who has given uh, an explanation, but it is not uh, not accepted by all. Mm. But in an old person's script, there are not many who uh, succeeded in understanding the whole thing. Okay. So you see the Holy Spirit, and this has been baptized at the St. Thomas Christ. So it comes from Mylapur, and uh, that is the beginning of it. So here, you have... Okay. Oh, wow. Oh, okay. Yeah. So here you, uh, you have on the right side, Ha, ho, behold, Jesus, Nazarenus, or Yeshu, Nostroyo, Malko, Ideori. Behold, Jesus, Nazarene, the King of the Jews. So you have Israel, Ayunara. So Ayunara is Israel. Yeah, you know the full form? Jesus, Nazarenus, Rex, Judeo. So that is Latin because Pilatos wrote it. Jesus, Nazarenus, so Bolia, you go down in the German Bolia. Jesus, Nazarenus, Rex, Rex, Judeo. J U D E O R U M. That's the Latin. Ah, you know, that is Latin because Pilatos wrote in Latin. But the Syrians have translated that into Syrian. Jesus Nasrainus Rex Udeo. Okay. Eh? Jesus Nasrainus Rex Udeo. J U D E O R U M U D O R U Okay So I am I am not in the airport than the guy in the room You know what is it in the airport? Yeah Yeah See on Pesach On on Holy Thursday People we make the Pesach Atom And in that they put also in the room so in the beginning, they used to uh, put this Ayanara. That's, that, that's called it is India. Okay, next one. <laughs> yeah. uh, here, they, we are in Mulanduriti. The Anavadi, that is the main entrance inscription. Is, so it goes back to 1575. You see, and it is written in the year. So all in Syria, the date is the same. So next one. So this is a Syrian Orthodox Church, and this is uh, 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 declared by the uh, Syrian Orthodox Patriarch of Antioch as the New Jerusalem. And here you find Koromelinga, the bell inscription, going back to 1584. Binu, when you go next time, you should visit this one. Your, yeah, uh, my mom's. Ah, yeah. So, so it is now uh, hanging not on the bell tower, but in one of the rooms uh, in that uh, side of the church. Did you, did you see that? Uh, <laughs> the church where mom is. Yeah. With a big boat of St. Thomas. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. Have, uh, so, this is one of the old rooms. Okay, next one. So, Kuravilangar, Bell Inscription, once again, so here you can read it very carefully. Bachina, uh, this means in Syria. Bachina, in the year. Alef, means one Olaf, one in Muhammad, one, five, hundred, and eighty-four. So, you have the names written in Syria. See, what is important is that the, the Christians of Kerala, they recorded their important messages or important details, not in Latin, not in Tamil, not in Malayalam, but in Sri. 
that the Syriac was the language of the Christians or something, so that we should appreciate that. Okay, here you find in Kravalinga the tomb inscription of Alexander de Campo, 1687. So in three languages, Malayalam, English, and Syriac. It is found Yeah. Eh? So it is actually near the Namaskara Mesa, and in front of the sanctuary, you find this. Okay, next one. Uh, here, uh, the church foundation inscription of old cathedral in Pala. That's also Bashina, Aleph, Bez, and so on. Uh, the date is not very uh, So the old Malayalam is the, the left one, one, and the second one is seven. And zero and two. It is the old Malayalam. Next one. So you see the uh, sanctuary decorations of the Syrian Orthodox churches in um, in Muatabla area. So how they decorate. And here more oh, important than yeah. the zero <laughs> Malayalam or Malabar church. So here you have. The date uh, when it was written, and then in the oh, year. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. It's just we're just charging the. Okay. We use somebody else. So well. you know, I I I signed in the church on our this is the door of mercy. In it there is mercy. Enter, O sinner, and ask for mercy from the Lord who is filled with mercy. So Rahame. So this you find at the entrance of the sanctuary. And there's a beautiful text, most probably coming from St. Ephraim, and you find the same um, quotation in uh, in Turkey and in Syria and so on. Yes. Okay. So this kind of sanctuary you find, uh, inscription you find in most of the churches in Muatibra area. So this is Kota Mangalam biographical inscription. Of more more and more the serious. Here again, you know, all there are these four baptisms every day in Kota Mangalam, uh, Syrian Orthodox Church. And most of them are called Basil. If you say if you find some Kerala people who are called Basil or Basil, you can ask them whether they are from this because they were all baptized there. So this is this Mark Basilios. He came from Thurakni and he died there. And he is buried. And this is actually his biography. It is written in Syriac, single, singular text. It is in the sanctuary, Syrian Orthodox Church. So it's a big pilgrim center of the Jacobite. So this again, a <coughs> memorial inscription in the same church, for the Mandala, but written in Syriac, and also it gives the date. So again, another one in Kandanar. So it, this. And this is uh, again the Kota Mangalam Vandiyapalli. And that age, yeah? This is Vassari right now? Or is Vassari, all Vassari. When did the, uh, from the beginning is Vassari? This one? From the uh, first one was all Vassari? Or after the belt? Or when did they change from east to west? Uh, this is the uh, uh, Jacobites. Uh -huh. you know, there was a um, um, Syrian Orthodox Bishop, Markurilos, who came. He is the one who initiated this um, uh, new movement uh, of bringing the Syriac inscriptions, and most of them were done at, at his influence. But this again, the date and that thing. And during Lent season, you know, they cover all these, uh, like the Latin churches here. Okay. Uh, this is a Manaram foundation stone, again in Syriac. It was uh, a thousand. 800, 1, So this is actually the date of the Sea of My Fathers, 
doing manual, and I have to see my monastery there. So it is their cornerstone. Or everything is not written there. Only the initial words, Orko, Mestasimas, Kipo, the Sovito, then the date. Okay. What does that mean? Yeah? What does that say? Ah, oh, here is placed the, the stone of the corner, corner stone, or the foundation stone, and then the date, 1831, and the month. May, you will see that. And this is again. Uh, this is actually the influence of uh, Suryak, of Malayalam on Suryak. <coughs> Sail, lovers, ausen. Go to ausen. Because this is a St. Joseph monastery. So on the altar, they have written that. So you, know, you, see, uh, you see the influence of Suryak. Monachanada Purna, Mana, Makuriakos, Mar Elias. He is buried here, and he will be proclaimed canonized the saint in, I think, November coming yeah, there. Yeah. yeah. Oh, Chavra. 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 And there are, this Kalsirti church and Kuravalangad is important because uh, here they have on the second day of Nidive fast, uh, Namaskar. That means that brings many people all over that area. That means they recite the all the, the couple of them crawling out. That is on the second day the, after the, the noon. So uh, after that, they go to Kadatu. So these two churches are well renowned for, uh, especially during the Moon Noem. In the Nuvalo, in the Moon Noem, there you see the, um, and this is actually an, incarn an inculturation. You see the elephants and so on, uh, and the motivation. See, holy, holy things can stand only a pedestal. So this is actually an inculturation from Hinduism. We took over those because so all the granite works were done by Hindus. Yeah. So even all our churches were built not by Christians, by Hindus, but they were the artists. So they also saw to it that there are Christian motives, for example, angels and here is Bishop uh, Bailoni from uh, from Lebanon. He was in a visiting city. Uh, so this is quality. So here also there are Sri inscriptions. Okay, Sura Malabhatra. You see that again. Behold the Lamb of God. Yah. Yah Yehovah. This is youth. Youth. And then behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. So all in Sri, you see. Uh, this is a multicolor, another inscription, so you can see that, yes. So in modern crosses you don't find it. So at that time, our forefathers uh, paid a lot of attention to see that these things were done. So this is again, Vallikata Deva, Sri Northrop's Church, the famous hymn, the ear. Elexinos. So this Kodamalu altar inscription. You know, Kodamalu was the place where Saint Alphonsa was baptized. So that is uh, in the in that chapel where she was baptized. So this is Palikara. Uh, this is uh, Hail Mary, full of grace, Swamli, Maria, Maria, Stebuso, 
അതാണ് ഇവിടെ അപ്പം ഇത് പള്ളിക്കര പള്ളിക്കര അക്ഷരസ് ബിറ്റ്വീൻ കാത്തലിക്സ് ആൻഡ് ദി സിറിയൻ ഓർത്തഡോക്സ് പീപ്പിൾ ദെൻ ദ ബ്രിട്ടീഷ് അതോറിറ്റീസ് he took some decision this church goes to the orthodox and that church goes to the catholics so this were all you see the decoration all these are catholics but because of his arbitrary decision this church went to the orthodox so that's why you find even in orthodox churches the latin interior decorations of the altar and the, all all these are actually latin you know you know the interior decoration and the church architecture in kerala were brought by the by the portuguese before that we may had you don't find perhaps tiruvankod is the only church uh, pre portuguese church we have in india or we don't have it what is the structure of that church uh that's more like a stone uh, you know like uh, uh madurai temple with a lot of granite uh granite pieces <coughs> roofing the building and so on so you what about the shape the shape, shape is uh, long Reckon. not like temple but very often people are doubting whether it is pre christian or pre portuguese or not anyway uh, so the the portuguese influence is found in all our church we don't have any uh, pre portuguese church in kerala what about the seven churches community is there yeah seven churches were community is there okay. but no monument as building is there because maybe due to our climate uh, maybe we had only one sanctuary like the temples so maybe with the portuguese we had actually the concept of a church uh, including a big area so this is actually a picture area in our surai garden so they are they now right snake systematically in all their churches in suri they were the assyrian so actually the assyrian patriarch is the patriarch of the surai uh, in the picture so they have adopted this thing yeah to fix jehova so that they have adopted it as their church symbol so this is also the name you see on the church's name they and they have also the curtains like melangara church so that is their baptismal font and that is tripunitra uh three level church you see <coughs> here again so this was the old for open place mongolan and then haikala and between haikala and the madbaha there is kestroma where the namaskar open was there mm-hmm. and the highest place actually always was the even on the roof level the sanctuary this moharam and the pochi sara ga teacher otherwise the highest point on the level, level of, of madbaha and also on the roof was actually in the madbaha area and this was our parish hall where people could come and sit there was no other parish hall so it was always open people used to come there and that was the bell tower for our work so tripunitra is a beautiful church and still existing <coughs> and this is altar inscription you see the 10 commandments on the altar and and you know morio alo ho i am the lord your god and god the whole alo in rain you shall not have other gods so all the 10 commandments are written in sri in this church in kambara and this is the only throne of the patriarch Uh, it is a copy of the Antiochian church in Thorapni. They have a patriarchal chair like that. It is a copy with Sriyak. And it is still, it's well decorated. Who has this one? Uh, Sriyak Orthodox Church. It's a beautiful church. 
And here again, you see, here you can bring. Well, now, Kursi, Kursi, you know, Kursi, you know, Kursi, you know, Kursi, you know, Kursi, So this is Kursi, the Ito of the church, Kadishto, Yakuboito, Yakubait, the Yolna Salevo of the Mother of God, the Trupunitura of the Mother of God. Mother of God. Okay. So, and also some of the tombs of the priests uh, have this inscription. Uh, the priest's name, date of birth, and uh, what he was, what he was a part of his kupa or something. And this is, you, you have four tombs like this of priests. So tomb inscription in Sri. And this is actually Pumata CMI Emperor. This is also a quotation from the Bible. And this is how uh, our friend Francoise, Critical uh, Chateaulet, with her and another uh, scholar, we published a catalog of all the Syria inscriptions in Kerala and also the manuscripts. And this is Father Kudam uh, He is a student of Sebastian Brock. So uh, he, myself, and also one Orthodox priest, we three are recognized as the research uh, guides of the Mahatma Gandhi University in Syria for Syria. So we were actually sitting, this is the Amaul of Bishop South. So, so he works with you? Yeah, he, he stays with us. Mm -hmm. and, uh, he has also st uh, uh, started a monastery, Beth uh, Ephraim, near Koravalingan. So from Monday to Thursday he is with us, and then he goes back to his ashram, and there everything is in Syria. They have a website. Yeah? Yeah. I think I've seen that. Yeah, you can. You can just so, everything's in Syria. Yeah. All the food. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All the other. Let's see. Has me. And he, I think he's a classmate of Bishop uh, Amadi. And so <laughs> this is his own writing. More Marwala, my Lord and my God. This is new. I don't know for a whole time. I am the way. And the truth and so on. So, Thomas Lee, I knew it. That must have been what it sounded like when he spoke. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Marwala. Marwala. My Lord and my God. And this is the day. This is Christ's birth. So, this is a baptismal too. So, very recently we went to uh, Wycombe. And there also, see that escaped. So, there also, there are some Syriac inscriptions. So, we, uh, next image. So you see the beautiful uh, sanctuary, and there also they have some Syriac inscriptions. You see, Kadisho, uh, Garvasis, Protasis, and Garvasis. This is Protasis. You know, Protasis and Garvasis, these two uh, saints were Syriac, and they were twins. And now uh, there is a church in Palai. Uh, they organize uh, the coming together of um, twin people. <laughs> and there are many couples who go there and pray, and they get twins. <laughs> so some of you want to have twins. So go there. <laughs> so you get twins. So go and pray. Prognas is at Nervasis. So that is this church. And, uh, you know, every year, every year it is attracting people. That's also in uh, Monitor. If you want, you can go there. Right? <laughs> 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 it's only as he's getting yeah. shy. It's not too late. <laughs> so, the glory is very good. And this Yohanan Katana, you know, he was. Uh, see, he was sent to, see, now we send our people to Rome. Oh. So formerly, this is already a sign that our church center was actually Babel. That means today is uh, Iraq. So we used to send uh, uh, able and intelligent uh, seminarians to Babel. And this is one, Yohannan Katna from this Vikram. And he went there. He was ordained by Odo Patriarch, 
returned to Cochin and died while he was parish priest in Eratua. And famous for his handwritten uh, Kaldaya Suryani Evangelion, the gospel. So he has copied and other prayer books in Surya. So that is actually the site of scholarship at that time. So that is his photo, Yohindan Katana. So that is the oldest manuscript we have. It was brought from Turkey. Uh, it goes back to, I think, uh, 1588. It's a prayer book, which we recite the Brayama part on. Okay. So you see the was the page? So Sebastian Brock uh, uh, regarded this. It is here that at the end of a manuscript you find the historical details. Who wrote the manuscript? Where did they write? At whose command? Uh, who has paid for it? And later on it was uh, given as a gift and so on. So it is in this detail. So it is here that we find the historical so Whenever you see a manuscript, immediately people go to the back. And see how old it is. So this is actually the oldest manuscript we have. It was formerly in Kerala, and you see these are prayer books of uh, <laughs> It was very big, and uh, this was brought. That these three was brought from Iraq. Big book. It is as big as this one, and this one also very big. And uh, this one was written by one Kerala priest from Kotamamu. So formerly the education of the uh, seminarians consisted in learning Surya. All our Bethany sisters formerly, they all learned Surya. But now they don't learn it. So they don't, they can't, they can't give you a specialized service in uh, our literature. So the correspondence between Antioch and Kerala was also in Syria. So here, the Vidya from Antioch gives blessing to the church in Tripunipara. And each priest used to copy uh, the Kurbana Taksa for him. So this is the copy which the priest made. So this is the beginning of Ananapara. So it's also in Tripunipara. Taksa the Kurbana. You see another one. Look. Anapara, the Kadisho, Bor, Petros, Risho, the Sleeper. So, again, Anapara of St. Peter, the head of the Apostles. Are there a lot more slides, or is huh? it, are there more, a lot more slides, or is it a good place to stop, or how? Oh, because almost like the money. Oh, oh, we will finish, we will finish. Yes. Okay, I'm ready. Uh, so then we can continue uh, later, like next Okay, time. okay. That's it. So that's all. Then you see the hierarchy of the Sir of Malabar Church. Yes, is there? Okay, thank you. Okay. So then Maratai, and we find also the Syrian Orthodox Church, Melandra Orthodox Church, and the uh, Syrian Toryu uh, Church. Toryu. And you? So, Mahkama Church and the Malangara Church. That's it. So, yeah. so, thank you very much. And that is our Siri Chapel. If you want to learn Surya, you can go there. Yeah. You see the this? Uh, these are all from uh, by Father uh, uh, Malangara. Uh, a Nanaya Catholic priest who was sent to Lebanon. Uh, so that is a Lebanese style, but Syrian iconography coming from Lebanon. But no, no, Syrian. Yeah, I think that's all. You can see. Yeah. So our library, you can see. Yeah, these are photocopies from the other side. So these are our students, you see. He is from uh, uh, Father Iyo, the only a deacon, Iyo, Orthodox, Orthodox. This is from Trivandrum Archdiocese. So this is uh, Gregorius in Trivandrum, uh, Baba Kachi, Orthodox, Orthodox. And here there is one Father Titus, Matoma, Matoma. Uh, 
and then I think uh, these two are also, uh, this is Catholic and this is Orthodox. So these are our, you see, welcome you all to the World's Ray Conference. Okay, thank you very much. Mm -hmm. That's all. Any questions? Last question? Anybody? So why isn't the church anymore, uh, why isn't the current church teaching Syriac any longer? Like the sisters, why isn't our church then teaching? Syriac, you ask the bishop. <laughs> because we ask, the, we ask them, uh, they think it is not necessary. Because it's not an everyday usage, right? Like so. Yeah, yeah. No, not everyday usage, but actually it is a... It's it has not, meaning, right? Like it, no, no, but you see, to bring out the treasures from the heritage, you need to you know, because you, you, do you find any Hindu sannyasi without knowing Sanskrit? Yeah. Nobody. All the Hindu sannyasis, they bring out their teaching always fresh from the uh, Bhagavad Gita in origin. So we need... Uh, Acha, what is the current projects that are in English or that are coming that regular people can use? People can use the current project is actually the translation of the uh, f uh, prayers of each feast. See, no church has done that. That's what we are now doing. And that will be in English when you get that, will, yeah, that will be naturally in English. In English okay. and Malayalam. Okay. Both because, at the same time will be released. Oh, they are. But and it will take some years, you know. <laughs> Rome was not built in within a day. A day. <laughs> because... Uh, you know, uh, there are many Sundays, and each Sunday has its own Yama Prata. So it will take time. Uh, we are asking the uh, bishops to send priests, but they don't send. You know, once one is a priest, they think everything necessary is given. And we get a lot of Roman doctors, that means all those who studied in Rome. None of them know the source. So that's actually the problem. Or the present generation of bishops. I think there is only one or two who know Sri. All the others know only Shmuelabolabrolabrohokadisho. <laughs> if you ask more, they, because it's not their fault, the system is there. So that has to be changed. Nobody knows. So you said there are 72 prayers on the Sundays. Of the 72, how many are already translated? Ah, uh, only 10 or 15. Because some of the anaphora are very long. So they are not usable. But all the same, it is interesting from the point of your theological richness. Yeah. So they are in the manuscript. And they have been edited with Syriac and the Latin translation uh, from by the... Uh, Pontifical Oriental Institute in Rome, but not all. There are some that are to be still edited. And our students, a master, they have a dissertation. So each one takes one anaphora and translates it, and that is uh, part of their dissertation. So that is being done. So you have like 70, 62 yeah. students more? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, some of them are not capable of doing it. So they do something else, something lighter. Which university is this? <laughs> MG University. How many students do we get? We, are support, we, we can take Chunji in every okay. batch, but we don't get that many. How many do we use average? In uh, around, how many you can count? One, two, three, <laughs> no, four, five, six, seven, eight, <laughs> nine. Uh, 10, 11, 12, 13. Uh, so 13. Uh, this year also we have admitted, I think, 12. So what, what is available in English for us today? Uh, we have uh, our, um, I didn't bring it. Uh, I think you you have, um, Clemens, you have, you have that our Yama Prata. Uh, that means the weekly prayer. Is in English. I can give you. I, I can give you one book. I think I have. This is the one that's already. Eh? I think they already brought a box, a uh, suitcase full of the, the daily prayers. Yeah. Monday through Friday. Monday, Monday through Saturday. Ah, uh, yeah, uh, yeah. It's already available. Yeah. From New York. From New York. Yeah. Oh, no, no. Yeah, it is in English available. 
but not with Surya. We have a parallel edition. On the left side, Surya. On the right side, the English. The translation was done by Bill Griffin. Oh, that book we used yeah, a couple that, years ago. Uh, that's, that's not Singapore. Oh, that the brown is, one? It's a literal translation. Mm -hmm. eh? The brown covered book? Yeah, it's yeah, got a cross on the front. Like yeah. That, yeah. that one is a, it's a literal translation. It's not easy to sing like. Yeah, you no, know, that cannot be sung. That is for right. It should be. The right. ones that are being prepared are ones. Yeah, that but that that is being sung. That that could be. But this is a, but we need actually a, a literal translation. Then only uh, you will you get the whole meaning. But it is being done, I think, by Bishop Eusebius. I mean, singable. Mm -hmm. What about the like you were saying? The songs are important. So how do you learn the the eight versions of any of our songs. Uh, only by coming there, or by <laughs> by getting the notation. Okay. But uh, Father M. M. P. George has done one thing to teach the eight melody system. He has <coughs> translated all the. Uh, here. I can show you. So here is actually the eight melody system here. So for each, for example, Edeman and Varimun Nereta, the Valere Cum Paulus, Golo the Morio Moran. See, all these are in eight. So for each group, there are eight passages in Surya. Now, Father M.P. George has taken uh, Malayalam translations with that, and you can buy that. But only that has to be learned uh, from, mouth, uh, from the mouth of the Malpan. Um, but you get that in notation now with our book, uh, Moral Eth. If you want, some of the melodies are already known to you. Edeman in Marimanere, or Paulus Lika, Anbudeone, or Mada Vyadik, Karan Naranjavane. So all, some melodies are known, but to know it and sing it systematically, you need to know the whole system. So that has to be learned. Uh, the, uh, among the Mala, in the Malangara church, now there is nobody. Some are learning it. From Trivandrum Father, uh, Newaris is trying to learn it. This job is known. Uh, mm -hmm. There's a Eo Perinard, he knows. So in the Orthodox church, there are some who know it. Is there, is there any Malpans in the Syrian church in the Middle East? Or there's nobody? Yeah, in the Syrian church there are. Because a lot of the Syrian translate, the the words are easier to translate to English than from Malayalam, right? The tombs? It's harder from Malayalam to English than Syriac to English. The, the, the length of the Malayalam is so much longer. Yeah, yeah, that's true. So that's why they leave out some words. So for the sake of tube. So they chisel out the words like that. So you get more or less the whole meaning. There are some uh, ideas that escape, but for music's sake, you have to mm -hmm. skip. Now, so you're going to tell us some names or some resources that are available to us on the internet or something you think? Yeah, for the, 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 the we can call. Yeah, or? from the internet, for example, if you want to learn Sri language, you get any amount of drama. Uh, you simply type uh, Sri. Uh, grammar, then you get it. Uh, can you simply try? You can. Sri Accepto. A lectionary in Syria. You get a lot of, for example, all our readings. But it is given under the Syrian Orthodox. Uh, if you see, it's a, see Syriac grammar, you see that? Internet, okay. Then Syriac dictionary, you get it. Yeah. Yeah. So I brought actually. I wanted to give you some lessons, but you are. Uh, I wanted to uh, write 22 letters today. If you have some, uh, if you have time, I could write fast and tell you. Uh, so now this is the old one. Uh, you have also others. There is a uh, uh, choice of modern books. See, take Robinson. This, for example, Robinson. This was written by Marie Vanius. 
when he was teaching in Calcutta uh, uh, in Salambo College. At that time, he was the only priest with MA. He was teaching in Salambo. And later on, this Robinson, he was teaching there because he was English. He published that under his name, actually, in the preface to the author. Uh, uh, author, it was actually now it is by, published by one of our friends, Hockey. It's a re edition. Uh, yeah, yeah. But unfortunately, it's the later edition, they don't do that. But it's the first edition, they said it is published by, it was prepared by Ente Givarinus. So you get actually all of this. Uh, can you change the alphabets that I will? Actually, the first letter. Olaf. B. G. D. H. B. Sein. Z. H. T. Y. K. L. M. N. S. A. P. Sole. Kop. Rish. So you have the letter here, I think I brought it here. You can sing it. If you can find out the letters, 26? Yeah, 22. Only 22. What's the tune? Only 22. Yeah. Oh, it's a <laughs> can, you, can you give me another, another list of the so you know um, uh, the Charanathale Ninkrupai. Um, who can read that? Um, <laughs> I'll teach that and then all of the uh, okay. Can you highlight this? Okay. Okay. We can take, for example, this one. You know Sharanathale and Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, I love it. God, love sign head that you call. Lamat nim nun sen kat e. Peso de kof ri shi so that's actually the. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you have it then. All of the people, 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 Okay. 
So there's no other accents or characters or anything other than these characters? These are the only characters. And then you have the, uh, I brought also the, the some, the Kauma, which you can take here also. Ah, uh, here. And uh, you have also the the Abu the Bashmayo. The meaning which you learn it myself together later on. Not now. Everything cannot be learned within a day. Yeah, yeah. And then what are you doing? Huh? Nala, how long are you I go to uh, New York and from there I go on the 13th to India. So, uh, if you want to learn Surya, uh, we can send one teacher. Uh, you pay for his uh, travel and then he can be here for one and a half months. And Father Raju will teach you soon. Yes. Our, Everything related yeah. to Robin. Uh, yeah. Robin. 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 For example, the inaugural uh, inauguration of the Sri World Sri Conference, uh, the Patriarch Sri and Catholic Patriarch is coming. Oh, he's coming for the second time. And uh, what's uh, his name? Um, Mar Yudan. No, no. You the one that was in Jersey. Oh, okay. Oh, New York, New York. Yeah. So he is going to celebrate in Syria. But that's not the Syrian the Syrian Catholic. Syrian yeah. Catholic. Oh, they have the same name. Okay. Yeah. One is uh, Afro, one is Yuna. Hmm. And in Syria, we recite all the prayers. In uh, so these are the Syria. So these are the book. Indian. See. In Syria. And the and the translation. Where do we get this book? Yeah. Where do we buy this? You can buy it from us. It's our publication. But in, oh wow. I can give you what I thought you had this. No, not this one. Ah, can you give us that one copy? One, one copy. Yeah, we'll yeah. take that. You, you come. Uh, I think this is the Beat Griffiths. Yeah, it's Beat Griffiths one. This though, I have this hard soft cover. Right? Oh, then yeah, I'll but take the one. Uh, <laughs> uh, this I use for my plan. Yeah, there are some notes. I think I so. You can. What, what is unique about this is that the different seven right. prayers of the day are for one whole week. One whole week. Is and then it cycles just repeats yeah. every day. Yeah. 
you can use this as meditation for your yes. group. So you can read the whole hour of meditation. Yeah. 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 Acha, we had one person on the internet here. Yeah, who is that? Remya, she's from Kanana oh, Yakova Church. Oh, uh -huh. Rem, one of the brothers. Hi, Acha. Hi, Acha. Hi, uh, Acha. Good evening. I, I Yes, please. That. Most welcome. Not, not any tattoos in the year, so I'm she's, yes. a, she's a student at Marquette University in Wisconsin. Oh, okay. She's also a twin. Uh -huh. Okay. Oh, okay. Okay. From the Kanana Yakov. Okay. 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 So it is open to all. You know, you know, Kualat Dhirmeni. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Kualat Dhirmeni is our student. Really? Yeah, yeah. he knows Sri, and he has learned MA. Uh, he took his MA in Sri from Siri. Of course, from Mahatma Gandhi University. The next, the next, it will be Ramya. Okay, yeah. Most welcome. <laughs> you are most welcome. Um, where are where are you in uh, in Kerala based? Where? Well, well my home is Kerala. Uh, we're part of the Kerala Yakovai Party. Yeah, where? Yeah, where? Manar. 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 Yeah, Manar is my my dad's house. Okay. Okay. Oh, so that is near south of Tirumala, though. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. okay. Check your book. <laughs> uh, okay, okay. Uh, yeah, no. uh, so anyway, most welcome. Okay, we, uh, we were just singing uh, the Syriac alphabets, which you can uh, sing also. Uh, so these are the 22 letters in Sri. Oh, so, yeah, the Sharana, Sharana, Tale, Minzabaya, Marana, Marenyo. So that is the tune. That is the tune. You can learn it. Uh, I have given the name here. Ask, ask this. Uh, uh, Binu to send you <laughs> the names of the letters. Yeah. Okay, so um, Saturday. Where will you be in New York? So I will be. I will be in uh, Elmhurst. You know, with our bishop. Are you serious? You go to Elmhurst? Yeah. Edna? Uh, on Apple, on he's he's Saturday. leaving Saturday too. Yeah. I'm going to New York yeah. on Saturday morning. Oh, at what time? I'll go to the Kanana Yako Family Convention. Oh, then you speak. Oh, and then she knows. Okay. She'll right. be there. So, uh, no, I won't be there. Uh, Saturday you'll be at the Bishop's house here. No? Yeah. Okay. Uh, El not here. Elmhurst. Oh, New York. New York. Okay. okay. Uh, that's also Elm. Yeah. El Elmont. Elmont. Yeah. Elmhurst. Yeah. Sorry, Elmont. I'll be in Elmont. But uh, I'll be. She, he'll be an hour away from where we are, Remya. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. If you can meet him, we can. One night we. Yeah. There's a good possibility we can. I can. I have some books there also. I left the Okay. Carry them. We'll come. Both if of us will. For the evening, if you come. Yeah. Uh, we can take Joe Sarvi's car and go, Remya. Yeah, yeah. Okay, 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 good. Thank you.
Okay, so, okay. Remia Joseph. Okay. Yeah. Okay. No. Thank you. Thanks, Rem. Yeah. Hi, Rem. Thank you. Hi. Oh, okay. Then oh, the no. Oh, okay. 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 Oh, okay